All right, NC Zero Q here. Oh, November Charlie Zero Quebec. Um, I've actually had the the rig completed for quite a while. I it only took me yeah, well, I don't know six or eight hours of time with the soldering iron uh, to get it on the air, and then um, that precipitated the build of a computer and uh, other station accessories to actually implement the use of the radio but that's a whole nother story but here you have it in the enclosure no making fun of my toroids um, you know not much to say I'm just trying to give you an idea of what it looks like when it's complete because as it happens I'm about to disassemble the radio so that I can uh, install the multi-band board option that I also have for it which um, to give you an idea of what that looks like and there's the the circuit board that comes in the kit and then um, oh the other night I went cross-eyed sorting through the half a gajillion small capacitors that are used for the uh, filter sections and other parts and there's a few resistors there uh, the bill of materials is on the Genesis Yahoo group you got a bunch of uh, relays there uh, parts necessary to construct some of the interconnection cables uh, a bunch of magnet wire and then of course yes uh, toroid cores so um, there's a few modifications that have to be made to the existing board before construction of the multi-band board can begin in, honest, in, in earnest and if you're just so you know if if you're building one of these and you already have the multi-band board option don't bother with this section here um, th th that will be a waste of time because so what I've done here is I have a completed G11 that operates on, um, I apologize for the shaking, a completed G11 that operates on 40, 30, 20, 17, and 15 meters. Um, but when I'm done installing this, I'll have a G11 that operates 160 through 6. So now I have to pull this board back out of the enclosure and there are a few uh, copper traces that have to be revealed by scratching through the whatever you call this green stuff and uh, a couple of jumpers that have to be soldered in uh, I believe these two relays have to be removed um, there are a couple of standoff spacers that go on the board I'm not sure about the orientation yet, but uh, I think I think that the board's going to mount, you know, somewhere in this general vicinity on top. And uh, so what I think I'm going to try to remember to do is take a few photographs as this progresses, just to help clarify the whole process of building and installing the multiband board, because it's a little hard to grasp what's necessary by reading the documentation on the website um, hopefully I won't screw it up but I, I have a pretty good idea of what needs to happen so I think that's what I'm gonna do is take a few pictures and figure out how to assemble um, you know a coherent video that, that that might help anybody else in my situation as it stands uh, knowing that I was going to get the multiband option and install it, I'm still glad that I went ahead and put the radio together the way it is and spent the last three or four months familiarizing myself with Power SDR, or excuse me, uh, uh, GSDR, um, and the nuances of this particular rig. And, you know, it, but as it also happens, I've been putting off uh, doing the, the, the multi-band board option because it necessitated my taking this 
you know, off the operating bench and putting it on the workbench. So, um, you know, if you have the multi-band board option, I would recommend, honestly, I would recommend playing around, well, I, I, I guess if I had to go back and do it all over again, I would just skip all of this here and just go straight to the, the multi-band option and get it done. So, I apologize for the blurry video. Um, at least this time I was holding the camera properly. Anyway, we'll check back in with you once it's all done and, and uh, gloat about the progress. And C0Q.